Hello everybody, this is Lori Anderson, contributor for FreedomOutpost.com and co-host for Resurrect the Republic, Dirty Uncle Sam Radio on RBN Network. As previously reported on August the 23rd, 2016, I shared with you the information that the head of the IMF, Christine Lagarde, was in court and charged with embezzlement and fraud. I made the statements that the globalist bankers, as well as the corrupt, are starting to fall. The illusion of their all-powerful organization is truly falling apart. Now I'm going to share with you some more information to back up the claims that the globalist elite are falling. As you know about the Brexit by now, the British um, had voted about leaving or staying within the EU. I'm not going to go over this information, but I am going to go over some numbers. A referendum, a vote in which everyone or nearly everyone of voting age can take part, was held on Thursday, the 23rd of June, to decide whether the UK should leave or remain in the European Union. Leave won by 52% to 48%. The referendum turnout was 71.8% with more than 30 million people voting. So what what do you need to know? The people are finally taking a stand, as you saw with Brexit, to leave the European Union. This is also a United Nations issue. We've been saying for a very long time, America needs to get out of the United Nations. They are, these are unelected bureaucrats who get together and they decide for the entire globe what they will or will not do. The United Nations is also, of course, tied with NATO which invades other countries under the guise of humanitarianism, but the reality is, is they invade countries to pillage them. They pillage the resources and they thieve from individuals as the IMF does as well. So I wanted to show you about the Brexit. What was some of the effects? David Cameron, the corrupt David Cameron, who went along with a lot of the corrupt politicians in Washington, also stepped down because the people voted to leave the European Union. So the people with with doing that vote not under pulled to regain their independence and get away from these globalist scum that are robbing humanity in and of itself, he also stepped down. So there was two forms of corruption that was annihilated at that point. Now as it stands there is another place from the Philippines. The Philippine president is threatening to leave the UN as well. This is an excellent thing. Our founding fathers made it very clear that we were not to have foreign entanglements. This is one of the problems that is going on around the globe. This, of course, is a foreign a uh, news organization. It is 369news.net. You may or may not have to hit translate, as I did have to hit translate. However, they are reporting on stuff that, of course, mainstream media refuses to report on. And this is what he says. I don't give a, excuse my language, but I'm going to read what is written. I do not give a shit about them. Philippine president threatens to leave the stupid United Nations. Okay, and there is the Philippine president. The president of the Philippines, Rodrigo Duarte, has threatened, and I hope I said his name correctly, has threatened that the country could leave the United Nations after the organization urged the Philippines to stop executing and killing people linked to drug business and threatened that state actors could be punished. I do not want to insult you, but maybe we'll just have to decide to separate from the United Nations. Rodrigo Duarte told journalists on Sunday, why do you have to listen to this stupid? I don't give a shit about them, he added. They are the ones interfering. You do not just go out and give a shitting statement against a country. Calling the United Nations in, in tool, Duarte said the Philippines could invite China, African nations, and other countries to create a rival international body. He went further slamming the United Nations response to other global issues. Look at the ionic boy that was taken out of the rubble, and he was made to sit in the ambulance, and we saw it, Duarte said. The picture of Omar Dinesh, 
a five-year-old Syrian boy, has recently gone viral around the globe. Why is it that the United States is not doing anything? Do I do not read you. Anybody in that stupid body complaining about the stench there of death? No, they're not because they're involved with it, sir. The Philippine leader also attacked the United States for more members of the public dying as a result of police violence. What do you think the Americans did to the black people there? Is that not rubbing off also? And critics say what? The angry tirade at the news conference in Davos City came after the United Nations Special Rapporteur on summary executions. Angus Kalmard urged the Philippines to stop extrajudicial executions and killings, saying that state actors could be punished for the illegal killings. About 900 people have been killed by unidentified attackers since May when Duterte was elected and another 665 died at the hands of the security forces, according to the National Police Chief. Duarte, however, has vehemently denied these accusations and said that the police only fired in self-defense, while he also lashed out at the United Nations. He shrugged off the prospect of repercussions that could follow as a result of his remarks. I don't give a shit about them. They are the ones inferring, Duarte said. He also wondered whether United Nations officials were indeed threatening to jail him and repeated that he was ready to sacrifice his life and presidency for his country. Duarte has developed a reputation for being very outspoken and even rude at times. Earlier in August, he called the U.S. ambassador in the country gay and a son of a bitch. So this is on um, 369news.net. Now, we don't condone, of course, uh, the murder of civilians. However, we do not know the situation. They cannot sit here and claim within the United States of America that we do not have the death penalty. So we do not know if this is um, a situation that is a true um, humanitarian issue. However, the United Nations in and of itself has no authority or right or even moral right to speak on anything as they support the invasion and the unlawful invasion of Syria. They support the United States and Turkey and Qatar and Saudi Arabia for arming, funding, training, and supplying ISIS terrorists in order to try to overthrow President Assad. The mass murders that have happened within Syria for such a long period of time have come back to it is our own United States government that has been funding the terrorism. We are not under any illusion that they are over there to help anybody. They are only over there to help overthrow Assad. Assad refuses to do a central bank, which of course leads back with IMF practices. He also is about natural resources. The United Nations and NATO is very well known for doing this around the globe. In order to control the people, in order to control everything that is going on, they must control the money, the resources, the land, the water, the food, and the people. If you control all of that, you as well control the people. These individuals are behind depopulation of the earth. They want the earth depopulated by 90%. That is billions of people. This is a crisis in which the United Nations and NATO, along with the United States and other governments around the globe who have been complicit in murdering of people in order to obtain their agenda. One does wonder, is the depopulation of Syria, how many hundreds of thousands of people have died because of NATO and the United Nations plan to depopulate the earth and to take control over Syria? So what do you need to know? is people around the globe are waking up. There is a hope, although mainstream media wants you to believe there is no hope. Although the fictitious federal government, whom is actually a private corporation, wants you to believe it is done, it is over with, and there is nothing we can do. That is absolutely not the truth. So what you need to know is with us standing together, each and every one of us, red, yellow, black, and white, gay, 
straight, it does not matter. United, we can stop their global terrorism. And I do mean global terrorism. I believe Nigel Farge says it best at a Trump rally just the other day in Jackson, Mississippi. And I will let him make the final statements of this video. By working together, we can throw out the globalist bankers. We can have them held accountable. We can remain and gain our independence back. Anyone who is under the illusion that we have independence right now is just that, under an illusion. It is time. We are in a time that is one of the most important times in the history of our union. We will either decide to be controlled by corrupt globalist elite bankers and individuals who are pure evil, who care nothing about individuals, who care nothing about your children and your families, or we can around this globe unite and lock these individuals up and say no we will not tolerate your agenda 21 we will not tolerate your mass murdering of humanity we will not tolerate your scams any longer we are awake to what you are doing our parents may have been fooled and our grandparents may have been fooled but we certainly are not and we are speaking out and I say this the new international order your dreams are fantasies and may they fall upon your eyelids with very heavy scales for you are not gonna win now a word from Nigel Farge ladies and gentlemen mr. Nigel Farage Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Good evening, Mississippi. I come to you from the United Kingdom with a message of hope and a message of optimism. It's a message that says if the little people, if the real people, if the ordinary decent people are prepared to stand up and fight for what they believe in, we can overcome the big banks. We can overcome the multinationals. And we did it. We made, we made June the 23rd our Independence Day when we smashed the establishment. And we did it. Everybody said we'd lose. And what did we see? We saw experts from all over the world. We saw the International Monetary Fund. We saw Moody's. We saw Standard & Poor's. We saw global leaders giving us project fear, telling us that if we voted not to be run by a bunch of unelected old men in Brussels, <laughs> yeah, well, it's OK. They don't like me either, so it doesn't really matter, does it? But they told us our economy would fall off a cliff. They told us there'd be mass unemployment. They told us investment would leave our country. And David Cameron, then our prime minister, but no longer, told us we might even get World War III. And we saw the commentariat, and we saw the polling industry doing everything they could to demoralize our campaign. On the day of the vote itself, that morning, they put us 10 points behind. And actually, they were all wrong. And they were wrong because what the Brexit campaign did is we reached those people who've been let down by modern global corporatism. We reached those people. We reached those people who have never voted in their lives but believed by going out and voting for Brexit, they could take back control of their country, take back control of their borders, and get back their pride and self-respect.
Now the big card, the big card the Prime Minister decided to play in the referendum is he got a foreign visitor to come to London to talk to us. Yes, we were visited by one Barack Obama. And he talked down to us. He treated us as if we were nothing. One of the oldest functioning democracies in the world. And here he was telling us to vote Remain. So I, having criticised, having criticised and condemned his behaviour, I could not possibly tell you how you should vote in this election. But, but, You know, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm hearing you. Uh, but I will say this. If I was an American citizen, I wouldn't vote for Hillary Clinton if you paid me. In fact, I wouldn't vote for Hillary Clinton if she paid me. Folks, the message is clear, the parallels are there, there are millions of ordinary Americans who've been let down, who've had a bad time, who feel the political class in Washington are detached from them, who feel so many of their representatives are politically correct parts of that liberal media elite. They feel people aren't standing up for them and they've actually in many cases given up on the whole electoral process and I think, I think that you have a fantastic opportunity here with this campaign. You can go out. You can beat the pollsters. You can beat the commentators. You can beat Washington. And you'll do it by doing what we did for Brexit in Britain. We had our own people's army of ordinary citizens who went out and delivered leaflets who went to meet people where they worked and where they socialised, who convinced and inspired people to go out if this was the one and only time in their life and to vote for change. So my advice to you, if you want change in this country, you better get your walking boots on, you better get out there campaigning. And remember, and remember, anything is possible if enough decent people are prepared to stand up against the establishment. Thank you very much indeed.